Hey, and welcome to the National Lacrosse League's 2013 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I'm Craig Rzinski, the Director of Communications for the Rochester Nighthawks, and I've been fortunate enough to watch Pat O'Toole's entire career with the Nighthawks, which began back in 1999. Tonight's speakers will include Commissioner George Daniel, keynote speaker Paul Gate, Sean Williams, presenter Mike Hazen, the Vice President of Player Personnel for the Nighthawks, Jody Gage. We'll also have a appearance by Kurt Snyder, owner and general manager of the Rochester Nighthawks, and of course we'll be hearing from the man whose night it is tonight, Matt O'Toole. At this time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the night, the Commissioner of the National Lacrosse League. Please welcome George Gage.
thing about the teams that I've been on, how many years I've played, I happen to be on seven teams in this league in 13 years. So I think I had a great understanding of what the goaltender can do for this team. And uh, I learned it early, let me tell you. I learned, in fact, I learned it so early it happened to be the first game of my career that I could value what a great goaltender can do for me. We had, uh, my brother and I were drafted into drafted to the Detroit Turbos at Syracuse University. And we went over to Detroit to practice, you know, for weeks, five weeks, uh, prior to the season. And we had our first game coming up. It was December 30th, 1990, down in Baltimore. And the players were coming from different areas. Uh, Gary and I had to be coming from Syracuse. Our other teammates were coming from Toronto and Buffalo.
turned out to be a great young year. You know, one thing I remember from that season, which I don't know if he thinks it was his greatest season of his career, but it's one of them, was a team, Colorado Chargers, playing with Rochester. We had a decent season. I think we were six and four. Buffalo had a great season. They were eight and two. And we had to play Buffalo in the semifinals. And that night I found out what time it was. Let me tell you. It was two to time. We ended up taking the worst loss I've ever been a part of in professional lacrosse. So we lost 20 to 10. And Buffalo went on to win the championship and they beat Philly that year. And they had a great team. I got traded from Rochester to Syracuse to, to play in my hometown where I had been living at the time. I guess I was in my town. Um, you know, Pat became a major problem for me when I come back to Rochester to visit. And it was really a combination of uh, Paddle Tool, or, or, uh, proving what time it was again, Reggie Ford, or the fans making me feel so bad about leaving Rochester. The combination of the three, I think if I had to combine all of my stats coming back to Rochester to face Pat and his team, I would say it was the lowest stats of any other team that played. So he certainly hit my number, that's for sure. Until my last year. I, he let me have one uh, one great moment at the end of my career. Uh, I, should, I can't really say that because there was two moments. I had one great moment, and then he ended up shutting the door a couple years later. So, in my moment, it was my last season in 2002, my first last season, I should say, in 2002. And we were playing in Washington, and it was a battle back and forth. Uh, I ended up going into overtime, it was 12 12. And I have to have the ball with I don't know, a couple seconds left on the shot clock. I moved right, I was kind of up top in front of the goal, about 20 feet out, and I moved right, and just because the shot clock was going down, I threw a backhand from up top, and I happened to catch the top corner, and caught that off guard, I guess, to win the game. So, in my last year was you know, a great, great moment for me to win a game in overtime, it doesn't happen very often as a player, and you know, I thank Pat for that as well. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, and in 2005, I made the grave mistake of coming out of retirement. Pat, don't ever come out of retirement. <laughs> Nothing good happens, just in the beginning. You know, I, one, I witnessed it myself coming out of retirement, and then I had to coach my brother when he came out of retirement. It wasn't great. Stay retired. <laughs> but uh, that season, you know, I came out, I played, I think my last regular season, I just want to again congratulate you. I truly thank you. You know, along with this group of people in the Hall of Fame, and you are a champion. And I hope we continue the winning race here in Rochester as well. Thanks, Paul. Before our next speaker, please turn your attention to the monitor and enjoy a brief video presentation on the Hall of Fame career of Pat O'Toole. Patty was our backbone. If uh, you know, he had a lot to do with our success, and uh, not only that, he captured the fans. You know, he was the fan favorite, and uh, it's so deserving that you know he's going into the NL Hall of Fame. He was uh, not only a professional on the field but off the field. He really promoted lacrosse. Anything the organization asked uh, Patty to do, he was there. Uh, true professional, and just so happy for him, and very deserving. You know, I think he's. You know, if arguably the, the best goalie that ever played, and I think uh, the big reason was Patty never got too high and too low. You were always getting that consistency effort. Well, when you're playing against Paddle Tool, he's one of those goalies that really uh, 
you know, he's, he's focused on the shooters. He really studies studies a lot of guys that are shooting the ball. And he was one of those guys that just, he, he competed every time he was on the floor. And uh, he was a goalie that you really feared to play against. So he definitely brought a lot to the Rochester Nighthawks. I think the thing that impresses me most about Pat O'Toole is really the backbone of the organization through uh, some of the greatest years in Nighthawks history. Um, he took the team to four championships, and I think that the thing that you can really tell by Pat O'Toole is that his, he's got a lot of resiliency. He works really hard. He's also a very likable person. Uh, in 2007, he had his greatest season, uh, and it was also the greatest season in Nighthawk, Nighthawks history. 15 straight victories is a uh, franchise record, and I don't think I was any prouder of anybody else. And the one good thing about Patty, you know, he yelled at us for a second, um, and then it was on to the next play, and that's that's the one good thing. That's one thing that you know, uh, this position I'm in now, I kind of learned from that side of things. You know, things can't, can't bug you. And, uh, Patty was a big key to, to, for that for me, for sure. It always seemed that time of the year where we needed a win that Patty would steal a game for us, uh, and a lot of times it'd be at home, and. Uh, you know, the fans in Rochester really took to Patty and, you know, when he changed ends and they all cheered for him, I think that really helped him and you know, that, that really, really solidified a lot of our seasons. Just be the middle of the season, we were down and we needed a big game from Patty and, uh, you know, he, he'd steal a game for us and then we'd go on a run. And I think that speaks a lot to his leadership compared to, you know, maybe what he said on the floor or what he did at practice, but that was... That was key. I remember that every year with him. He'd, he'd, he'd make that great save, have an unbelievable game, you know, 60 saves, and then we'd, uh, we'd go on a run just because of that one game. Our next guest speaker has been a teammate and an opponent of Pat O'Toole for nine seasons, is also a member of that 2007 championship team. Please welcome Sean Williams. Forehand, backhand, whatever was needed, I would throw it to you. 
For the next nine or ten years, I chased Patty all over the place, I'm trying to play on his team. We're just watching him play in arenas all over uh, Southern Ontario and uh, you know Buffalo, Rochester. During that time, he was winning championships and MVPs, whether it was in the MILL or uh, you know being a Mike Kelly Award winner of our Man Cup. Patty was taking care of business and taking care of his teams. Finally, in 2002, I got traded to Patty's team, the Rochester Nighthawks. Not only was I excited about the opportunity to play for this team, I was jacked to play with Patty. Right away, we knew we had something special here. 2003, goalie of the year, led us to the finals all right, right in this awesome building. Definitely that night was Rochester versus Toronto, but actually I think it was more Patty versus Bobby. Probably whole game 7-5 final. It was uh, obviously great to be a part of. Sad that we were on the opposite side, but uh, it was unbelievable. During the next few years, we were getting close again. We knew we had something special. We kept adding pieces, adding pieces, and we had this family, family atmosphere. Of course, led by uh, Big Papa Patty, head of the household. I keep touching on how he's always taking care of us, whether directing traffic from his net, which is usually yelling at. Uh, me or John Grant or whoever to get off the floor, get the defense on. <laughs> or in practice, he would sit there as you're warming up and he would he'd hold up his arm and a second before you shot, and like, you see him do this, and then he'd actually, you hit his arm, and he's like, try something new. <laughs> he knew what you were doing right away. But uh, the way, you know, a little funny story, he would take care of us in Philly, you know, obviously, everyone likes cheesesteaks when we go to Philly. <laughs> After the game, you know, usually we uh, we we won those those years in Philly. But uh, after the game, Patty would go around and uh, collect money and take orders for uh, for cheesesteaks. So when all the boys, they'd, uh, some boys like to go to the movies, some like to go to the coffee shop, whatever their advice was. But uh, whenever we got back, you know, everyone was so hungry, and then uh, Papa Patty or Santa Claus, whatever you want to call him, would walk in with a big box of cheesesteaks and just start passing them out. And uh, he, you know he liked to take care of his boys. Um, watching that film in 2007, uh, it, it was obviously unbelievable to be a part of. And uh, you know, obviously the backbone of that team was uh, was right here. And uh, it took us all the way to the championship. And we had to, unfortunately, we we, we had our, our home date set. And we we couldn't play here. And we, we thought, oh my God, you know. And it's it's like you know what. Just relax, boys. You know, we, we went down there, and uh, Arizona had a you know big, young, fast team, and uh, yeah, Patty took care of it, and uh, we had the championship to show it. We could talk more about Patty's accolades and all, and all the things he did on the floor. However, it's who he is off the floor that makes him a Hall of Famer. I've always looked up to you. Just a competitive leader, and still do. Not only as a player, but as a person, husband, and a I'm very proud and honored to be speaking tonight on this great occasion. And I'm very proud to call you my friend and family. Congrats again to your, you and your whole family. Thanks, Sean. Here to present Pat for the Hall of Fame is former teammate current coaching colleague, longtime friend, brother-in-law, the list goes on and on. Please welcome the head coach of the Rochester Nighthawks, Mike Casey.
consider to be the greatest goal of all time. Uh, every time we stepped on the floor, uh, Patty gave us that confidence you know, to play on that edge because uh, we knew if we made a mistake, he was going to definitely going to bail us out. And, and time and time out, we did. Uh, you know, he had the ability to pick us up when we were down. Uh, he would make that big save, a huge, uh, had no business making. And then at the same time, he'd pick up that rebound and fire it all the way up the floor. Willie, or Junior, or Dewey, or Mercy. Guess what? Those boys put in the net and the way we went. Um, you know, it, it was a career that lasted 16 years, and I'm going to get into a little bit of his credentials tonight. I can't believe it's just one thing. Uh, but like I said, it early led us into the 96 and 97 uh, MLL finals. Uh, and we won it in 96. The championship game on MVP that year as well. You know, um, over 10,000. Over 10,000 in the play from the state, second all time uh, for goals. Tenth all time in games played. Second all time in saves uh, for this league in history. Uh, but we're kind of, at this point too, in our positions, we've kind of talked about this a couple times. He only needs eight more. There might be a time when we're going to run eight more. We'll get him back to number one. It's only eight years, only eight. Um, you know, I said it earlier, but it's, it's very fitting that uh, that this special night for Paddy is here in Rochester. Um, you know, it's where Paddy had his greatest years. You know, 2003 goal in year, he led us into four championship cup finals. And after a long time coming, coming the league and touched on it, 2007, he was the reason why we won that year. You know, if you look at it, that alone will make him an all of famer. But it, it's really, again, touched on. It. It's what he does out the floor. Uh, and what he is, is, is part of our family. He's a big part of our family. Uh, but you know, he encompasses all that character, all the integrity that makes him a great person. And the 12 years he played in Rochester, I think every fan can attest to this. He probably spent just about over 10,000 minutes signing autographs and during these age rings that were on the floors. Um, you know, every person in the arena that he would see, you know, he'd take the time to talk to him. He gave him a shirt off his back. Go over to a, a different time, a, a different different team, but uh, back home in Brampton, he used to play for another team. But every time he'd come home after the game, it'd be hot. Ten minutes after that game, he'd be back on the floor. If there's 50 kids on the floor or 100 kids on the floor, he'd stand there and let every single one of them shoot the ball on to the score. Except for the big kids, you know, the hot shots. Uh, he used to take them have a lot of fun. You can hear them laughing every time they shoot and go, oh, got that one. And, oh, talk about that, Penny's accolades. I almost forgot one thing. The guy can freaking score goals, too. Um, and it was really cool to be a part of it at, you know, at the time. But the next year, it was contract time. And Jody Gage came to me and said, well, hey, your goalie had scored, too. <laughs> All I can do is I can't give it. I guess I'm signing it. Thanks for that pay cut, Patty. <laughs> you know, uh, for us, uh, you know, being, being a part of, uh, part of this uh, great team, this, this great organization, this great city, you know, we, we thrived on the start of the second and fourth quarters. You know, and I'm not too sure how many times Patty ran down to the crease. You know, he does have that rule, and not quite so here with Dino, but goalies don't run. So, <laughs> however he made it down to that crease, when he got there, the whole building erupted, and you know, by sitting on that bench, we just sort of take it in. You know, one, we knew everybody's going to be okay. We're going to get, no matter what time of the game it was, if the rock were down, we're going to get this one here at home. You know, and then, uh, and then Patty make that big save, and the two-time champ would come out. And as most fans know here as well, after every game, uh, you know, Patty's stool time would happen as well. And you know, again, talk to everybody three hours in the morning. Make sure everybody you know, make sure everybody is safe on our team, but also make sure the city of Rochester is taken care of as well. I'm going to end it on that note because it's going to be Patty's turn, but I just want to say that, that congratulations, Patty. This is well deserved. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege to present Patty O'Toole to the NRL Hall of Fame. I played in the game that I love for 35 years and entered in the Hall of Fame in professional lacrosse an unbelievable feeling. I got in a lot of trouble last year as I started my speech with the words, I'll keep this short. So, so this year, I hope you have a good seat 
because this isn't going to be short. I'd also like to apologize for reading this speech tonight, but I don't like to remember how every goal went into me in the 2007 final game. I couldn't remember my name if it wasn't written down on a piece of paper when I was speaking. <laughs> when I got the call from George Daniels that I was going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame, I started to reflect on my journey and my career. And it brought back a lot of memories. From starting out as a little kid, and believe it or not, I was a skinny little blonde haired kid who played out, to the last game I played four years ago. Not so skinny. The one thing I know is I wouldn't have changed a thing. I love playing lacrosse. I love that my life turned out to be simply amazing because of it. From great friends, championships, to meeting my wife, the support of my family, and two great kids, the cross has been the backbone of my life. Today has been truly awesome. I've been able to reminisce with fans and players here. It was very exciting to watch that video tonight. I don't know if any of you have seen the, the video War, or uh, the Toronto Rock one, uh, War on the Floor. But it's a Toronto Rock highlight reel and not so many saved by me. So having my kids here sit here today and watch Dad actually stop the ball is a great feeling. But on a more serious note, hearing my uh, coaches and my teammates talk so kindly of me is a great feeling. Today, uh, the one thing that I realized though, standing up here today, is you don't get to stand up here without thanking a lot of people. And that's where the time comes in. I'd like to start out by thanking the fans. You got the ball rolling with my name to be considered on the Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank the Hall of, Game, the Hall of Fame committee for my nomination and eventually my selection into the Hall of Fame. Also the Hall of Fame members for your votes and support. I understand that I got a vote from all members of the Hall of Fame and when your peers see fit to recognize your career with an honor like this, it is a truly awesome feeling. It is an honor for me to have my name mentioned in the same sentence as all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mr. Commissioner George Daniels, Doug Fritz, and the entire league office for your continued support and hard work. This has been a fantastic event for both my family and myself. George, I'll never forget when I received your call that and I was going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. A great deal of memories and accomplishments rushed through my head in that conversation, but mostly just an overwhelming sense of pride and your kind and sincere words will be remembered and appreciated forever. Thank you. Also having this ceremony right here at the Blue Cross Arena. The guys touched on it, but usually this happens after the draft or around the draft in Toronto. Uh, Kurt Styers, Louis Stas, Doug Fritz, George Daniels, you guys uh, allow this to happen right here, where I proudly, where I played for 12 seasons and proudly wore the teal and purple jersey. Thank you very much to all of you. Less than a year ago, along with my family, I had the pleasure to stand on the floor as I was being inducted into the Nighthawks Hall of Fame. And by the way, I did ask they wouldn't let me bring my crease up here tonight. <laughs> it was a great night for me as I got a chance to thank my teammate, my Nighthawk family and the Nighthawks fans for an outstanding run. It was also great to share with the current players about what being a Nighthawk meant to me. As I said that night, I had the opportunity to thank all my teammates. And I'd like to say again tonight, thank you. Thank you for 16 great years. Without your hard work, I would not be standing here today. As a goalie, you rely on your players a lot. And you guys battle hard for me every night. The simple fact that I'm standing up here tonight is a testament to how good you guys were. I would, like, I would also like you to feel as part of this introduction, induction tonight, as I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. To all my teammates, thank you. I love playing the game of lacrosse, but there is one thing that made that Saturday night special, and that would have to be the fans. Thank you for support over the years. Not many professional athletes can say they have their name yelled out in appreciation every game. There's nothing better than hearing that tool time cheer. You guys make this barn rock, and there's nothing better than playing lacrosse and that with that kind of support. Thank you. I played 16 seasons in the NLL, and I played with some of the best players in the world. From walking into the New York Saints training camp in 95 and the excitement of playing in the big breaks to my first game the next year with the Bandits and being in the dressing room with Hall of Fame players Jim Dalton, Darren Jimrich, Kilgore, and the all-time leading everything and future Hall of Famer John Tavares and so many more great players. Then in 1999, my journey as a Nighthawk began. I came here to Rochester, walked into the dressing room in awe 
of all the great players. Dewey Jacobs, Randy Burns, Kurt Malowski, Tim Sudan, Dan Teep, the Bombarys, and Chris Driscoll. I'm sure you guys all lit me up at one time, but it was finally great to have you on my team. And of course, the backbone of our defense, Reggie Thorpe, and the pain in your butt, little guy, Kevin Dance. As the years went on, the players came into our lineup. Our defense got better and meaner with the additions of Casey Zaff, Andrew Turner, and Pat Kugelman. In 2000, we drafted a kid who in 2007 put us on his back and brought us to a championship. I don't think I was ever on the floor that John Grant Jr. didn't do something to amaze me. Thank goodness he was on my team. We also traded for Sean Williams. This was special for me as I started playing lacrosse with Sean in Scarborough at times at the age of eight. And we also went on to win a junior championship together. To come full circle and win a championship in 2007, and then the champion, oh sorry, at the age of eight, and also won the junior championship. To come full circle in 2007 and finish my career playing on the same team is something I'll cherish forever. Sean, thanks for being part of this night as well. I appreciate you coming all the way from Buffalo after your game today. It meant a lot. I know I can't mention all the players that I played with, but I wish I could. As the things about these guys are, they're like family to me. And family is a good segue for my next Thank you. Hazer, in 1996, we were both young men starting out in Buffalo. Not knowing each other at the time, we sat beside each other in the dressing room. Since that start, we became roommates and played on the same team for 15 seasons and now coached for three. You are the best captain I ever had. A quiet leader who led by example and so smart. And did I mention one heck of a slash too? As Jody Gage once asked me, who is your guy? Who is the guy that you can rely on? The guy that always will be on the same page and you are my guy. I know, I know I wouldn't have the success that I had without the chemistry that we had. You are a major part of my success. You are a great friend, a dynamite person. When Doug Fritz asked who would be my presenter tonight, it was obvious to me. The guy that I started this journey with and a great friend. Thank you for your kind words and being up here with, up here with me tonight. I've had great coaches along the way too. Less partly in Buffalo than Paul Day, Eddie Como, and Paul Gay, along with their assistants. Not, that, not, not only did I learn to become a better player and increase my lacrosse knowledge, these guys taught me to be a good person. Coaches sometimes know the impact, or so coaches sometimes don't know the, the impact that they have on players, and I was fortunate to have coaches that are great people and are also the best coaches this game had to offer. You guys cared about us and made it real easy to go to get all you had every night. Thank you for molding me into a goalie and the person that I received this honor today. I would also like to thank the training staff, Kathy Jen, and the doctors for keeping me together and getting me out on the floor each night. To the best equipment managers, Jack, Ryan, and Shoggy, thanks for all your hard work for treating us like stars. To the many people behind the scenes that don't get a lot of recognition, but work non-stop to bring this game to new heights. Lewis, Wendy, Landon, Jody, Tracy, Ripper, and the entire executive, thank you. I've been very fortunate to play the sport I love, and I'd like to thank Chris Bridge and Russ Klein for believing in the sport of lacrosse and bringing it to the professional level. I've also been very fortunate to play for two great owners. First, Steve Donner, who always treated us great with a lot of respect. He was a pioneer in how to treat lacrosse players like professionals. And now, Kurt Styers. All I can say is, wow. You have taken professionalism and commitment to an entirely different level. Your love for this game and this team is unbelievable. I can't thank you and your family enough for doing for what you do for this lacrosse team. The reason this team has won back to back championships and it all starts with you. Thank you both. I'd also like to take, take the time to recognize some other people who had a great impact on my career in the early days. Bill Willis, my first coach ever. We didn't have a very good team back then and we took it on the chin a lot of nights. But you made lacrosse fun and that is why I stayed, and that is why I stayed with it. You were knowledgeable, tough, but you always made it fun. Kevin McLean, I emulated your game my entire life. You're a great goalie and an even a better person. When my big brother didn't want me hanging around him, you always took me under your wing. That will never be forgotten and the biggest reason I wanted to be a goalie. Steve Jurley and Greg Williams, my junior coaches in Scarborough. My first couple of years in junior were pretty tough and I was even asked to be released and go to a lower level. You guys took over the team the next year and gave me the chance to play. 
You believed in me, and you basically saved my career and gave me the confidence to continue on. Jamie Batley, Bobby Keys, Millie, and the entire Peterborough staff, thanks for believing in me. You guys taught me how to win and what is needed to be cons consistent winner. Values I'm trying to pass on to my kids. Thanks very much. A great part of my success and support is the support and encouragement from my family and friends. To my mom and dad, I can't thank you enough. A big part of this honor today is you guys. Looking up in the stands and seeing you guys always inspired me. From being a young boy and needing a ride to the ring, to the later years when you just got in your car and traveled three hours like the game was in your backyard. You guys were always there to support me, and it was very much appreciated. And by the way, Dad, you still owe me $13 for that game in Pee Wee when, you, when I was sick and you said you'd give me 50 cents per se. <laughs> to my brother Mike, you have always been my idol. I have always looked up to you, so you can imagine my appreciation for all your support throughout the years. I can't look at you right now. I will tell you right now that there's no better feeling than having the guy you idolize look at you with pride. I can see the pride in your eyes when you talk to, when you talk about me, and I appreciate it very much. To my sister Kathy, your continuous support is very much appreciated. There is no bigger fan than you. Just as the poor guy in Buffalo that sat beside you who said I sucked. By the end of the game, his tail was between his leg and his mouth was buttoned shut. He knew not to mess with me while you were around. I know you could be you couldn't be here tonight, but hopefully you're watching this on the YouTube so you can. So you can know how much I appreciate your support. To my uncle Peter and Anne Blanche, no matter where I played, you were you were there to support me and cheer me on. I look forward to every game that you guys can make, and I appreciate you taking the time to come out from Kingston. Thank you. As the years went on, my family started to grow, and I had a lot more people coming out to watch me play in Rochester. So I'd like to thank my in-laws Ken and Sylvia, to my brothers, sister-in-laws Cheryl, Tim, and Melissa. Although you kind of had to be here because your husband played in the team too as well as my nieces Natasha, Ryan, Jamie, Lauren, Carly, Lexi, and my nephews Austin, Aiden, Leo, and my cousin Tim and JP. Thanks for all your support. I coach my son's team, and we are trying to install all the same family values as we have on this team, and it is working. Here tonight I have seven of my kids and their families to support me. Thank you guys for taking the time and making this evening more special. To my wife, Lynn, I just want to say thank you for all your support and letting me live my dream of playing lacrosse. Without your love and support, this journey would have been a lot harder and not as much fun. Thank you for playing the role of single mom in the winter months as we raise two great kids. The words thank you just don't seem enough. But all your support is very much appreciated. I love you. To my kids, Connor, Kayla, I would like to say thank you for your understanding and support when Dad wasn't around every weekend and out playing lacrosse. Your cheers and unconditional love is very much appreciated. There was nothing better than coming home and getting a big hug and kiss from you guys. Win or lose, you always thought your dad was pretty good. Thanks, guys. Finally, I would like to say, finally I'd like to say that this is like a dream come true. But even in my wildest dreams, I didn't think entering the Hall of Fame was something that would happen. I love playing lacrosse, and this truly is one of the best moments of my life and career. This is an honor that I will cherish forever. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Pat. Very well deserved. Our final speaker tonight knows Pat very well. Andrew Snell, the man that helped bring him to Rochester. He's also currently the VP of Player Personnel of the Rochester Nighthawks and he's a 
Hall of Famer in his own right with the Rochester Nighthawks, Jody Gage.